Hi everybody and big welcome to Arriva Crew Tech. Now this is not a video about Riva in general, how to play Riva. This is looking into a specific Riva build. Now this video style isn't aiming to create and showcase the best Riva build you could think of, but more of a cool ID, a game plan that you can build from, a form of inspiration. And it also could be good and we will be talking about that in the video. Now this video is actually its first of its kind. But I think it could be a very cool concept, a tutorial on how you could build Reva, so to say, one of many different possible builds. Now let's get started. Now this build obviously has an awesome name, Zombie Bombs. The original master for this crew is actually Anna Lovelace and Azura Rotten together. Or to be more correct, these three, Karen Emissary as well. You see, Anna Lovelace have a really cool ability called Remote Detonation. With this, she can send zombies, make them explode. With this, your crew can operate a little bit globally and threaten at a big, great range. And that concept just sounded fun. Like, imagine having a lot of mindless zombies walking around, then making, like, stuffing bombs inside of them, making them explode. Now, like, that ability isn't that good, but it's kind of cool. However, with Asura Rodden, we get access to an ability called Rottenberg Residence. Friendly mindless zombie models within a loss ignore the insignificant ability during their activations. And by the way, she has an ability called Reanimate. You can't make mindless zombies make interact action during Asura's Rotten activation with Reanimate, but during their own activation, they can make interactions. And suddenly this little mindless zombie can make interact actions and plant ski markers. This can give you an enormous action economy because you have so many different small sheep zombies that you basically summon that can make interact actions for you. This ultimately means that you have more actions available left over for you for your big beaters. Like you don't need to run around with your expensive models and make interact schemey actions. You can make your attack actions and your walk actions with your expensive models and use your zombies that you summon to make the interact actions to win the game with victory points. But this is where that Carrion Emissary comes into, into thinking. He has a bonus action, Exhumation, that is very easy to successfully summon a mindless zombie, but with a great distance forward. I really like this bird, it's an amazing model, it looks so cool. But look at the reach we can have here. We're getting the zombie quite far forward, into position. When Asura Rodden summons zombies, she does that in base contact, so that limits her global presence with them. But you can make this really fun global presence where you summon a zombie with the Karen Emissary and then Anna Lovelace blows it up. But there's a much better combination and this is where we're actually getting into why we're playing Reva to begin with. You see, Reva has an ability called Enkindled the Cult. When this model will suffer damage, it may kill a friendly model within 2 inches to reduce that damage to zero. So you can suddenly use mindless zombies to actually protect Reva. But it continues, look at this. So let's say that someone is attacking Reva. Now, Funeral Peer will trigger and you will create and drop a Peer Marker. And then tear back the Veil triggers and you may push models that were in loss and range of that AoE from that Peer Marker drop. And then Visions of Fire also triggers and deals damage to the models that attacked Reva. So a final outcome from all of this, they attack Reva, they deal damage to her, you use Enkindle the Cult, you kill one of your zombies or one of your totems, we're gonna get to those soon. Funeral Peer triggers because Reva killed a model and you drop a Peer Marker. Now tear back the veil, I love how they're going from up to down here, tear back the veil triggers and you may push models including Reva, so you would get, would get to the Visions of Fire where she gets healed too, but you will put peer markers and put them into the peer marker on the enemy that attacked her and then visions of fire triggers and the model that just gained burning takes a damage, you put burning on Reva and you heal her. So like, you can't attack Reva suddenly. You like, have to sit and kill off these mindless zombies. And here's a problem with them. They are hard to wound, now they have defense free, so it's easy to hit, but they have a hard to wound and they have a free health. So a lot of attacks in Malifaux at the minimum damage has two damage. That means that you can make some really annoying action attrition against your opponents. Imagine someone that's like trying to kill Reva. They probably have to kill the zombies first, but because of that hard to wound, 
and if they have a minimum two damage attack, there is a chance that it's going to take two attacks to kill a useless, mindless zombie that we are creating with bonus action from a big bird. But we kind of also have to kill the zombies as the enemy to this crew, because the zombies are going to run around and just scheme, or well, we could try to kill Asura Rotten, that will seal the deal. So when you're playing this crew, you might need to put Asura Rotten far behind, where she has line of sight to all of the zombies, but your opponents are just going to run up and kill Asura Rotten that easily. Don't put her far forward. She needs to be strategically placed. But you're playing really globally. Like you're sending mindless zombies across the map, a little bit here and there, interacting. And sometimes you're using them to blow up key positions if people clump up too much. And sometimes you're using them to protect your boss, the master Reva. And this synergies greatly with Reva's general playstyle. You wanna walk her far forward onto the middle of the battlefield where her visions of fire has a long reach everywhere. In general, Reva is kind of short distance attack, like Immolation, Lantern's Light and Fan the Flames all have a reach of 8, so she wanna be in the middle of the battlefield. She has a very similar playstyle to Pandora. You wanna be her, you, she wants to be tanky and you want her aura to affect all of your opponent's models a little bit here and there to maximize out small attrition damage here and there. But she doesn't have any form of defensive tech except for that Enkindled the Cult. So she's a defense 5, 11 life model that dies really fast. So she needs protection. And by the way, if you have problems getting Reva killed, I recommend Lure. Lure her out out of position. And then when she isn't surrounded by zombies and her totems, then kill her afterwards. But if she has a zombie next to her, never attack Reva. I promise you. It's gonna backfire so much. You're gonna have a Peer marker dropped onto you, Reva is going to be healed, you're going to take burning, you're going to take visions of fire, and now you're standing in a peer marker, so don't do that. But let's take an extra look at friend remote detonation, friendly undead only. This is an undead. We can actually use remote detonation on the corpse candle. Huh. Now, when the corpse candle actually dies, it has demise ability smoldering heart. After this model is killed, drop a 50mm burning hazardous peer marker into base contact with this model. This creates an amazing synergy between these three models. Reva is summoning Corpse Candle on her activation from Corpse Markers. Corpse Candles aren't mindless. They can actually activate when they are summoned. So make like two walk actions, move them into position, and then you activate Anna Lovelace and you blow them up. This will then trigger the Demise ability, dropping a Peer Marker. Like, don't care about the fact that maybe the opponent dodges the Shockwave. You're gonna vacuum your opponent still with that tear back the veil. So Anna functions perfectly here with Reva. She's out of keywords, you have to pay 11 soul stones for it, but I, I really love the ability to blow up and vacuum and move models globally across the battlefield a little bit here and there when I need to. But let's take a sh short look at Decay and Rotten Rend. They have blast effects. So if you're able to one bow combo here, use Reva's vacuum ability to move enemy models closer to each other, you can then sit and blast them with a Sora Rotten and carry an Emissary. Like this crew could have a lot of AoE attacks. We could even up that one more with Deacon Hellchrist's Flame Blast that also has a blast in its attack. But suddenly we're like solving two different things here. Like we're really good in a death ball. Reva's usual playstyle is really death ball-y. We're moving all of our models together forward. And if the enemy are clumping up together, we have a lot of AOE effects, we have a lot of peer markers that we can center in the middle and really play that enormously strong death ball that is also very durable because you can sacrifice your mindless zombies, you can blow your mindless zombies up for AOE damage. So your opponents don't really want to clump up against you. But then at the same time, you can play that really global game where Asura Rodden is allowing your mindless zombies to interact all over the battlefield making you really capable of playing that spread out game as well, that very interactive game. Remember, you have a lot of actions from mindless zombies making interact actions. Just making sure you're being having a presence all over the battlefield. Like, look at this game. We have a big clumped up map fight in the middle, and then zombies are a little bit spread out, a little bit here and there, making interact actions as well. Saving your fighting actions for combat while the mindless zombies are making the interact actions to gain victory points. 
And with Asura Roden and Karen Emissary, we were making something like one to two zombies a turn. We could actually make three because Karen Emissary has on the Rot and Rend Zombify, living only after killing the target, not drop any markers, summon a mindless zombie to base contact with the target. So we could make three zombies a turn, or well, four, but yeah. It's not gonna happen that often, but like three zombies a turn is a possibility. Now the total cost for these three models are 29 soul stones. One extra because Anna Lovelace is out of a keyword model here. But this means that we have 21 soul stones left. And from here your build could be very open. You could do a lot of tweaks depending on what you need, depending on what you're going up against. Already mentioned Deacon Hellchrist, I quite like that guy. Also by the way, his bonus action drops pure markers. That's really good with Riva. Lamp pads are in general really strong. You usually summon them, but you don't summon like all three. So like buying one lamp pad is kind of fine. The restless spirits can drop corpse markers, and you can use those corpse markers for various tricks and upgrades. But I recommend grabbing whatever you find necessary. Like the core concept of this build is to summon zombies, spread them out, utilize zombies in different cool manner, either to make interact action. At offensive, make them explode or use them to protect Reva when she's center point in the middle. So the, the, this crew can actually play very adaptive. But I guess we should talk about the very core blow the thing up wombo combo with Reva that is summoning lamp pads. More or less the strongest thing you can do is slowly and steadily make a model's life drop a little bit too low somewhere around down to like 5 or 4 and then use a lantern slide, or probably the model have already gained burning throughout the course of the game, and then use Immolate. Now, you need to save cards in your hand to make sure that the Immolate actually succeeds. So if you have like a 12 or a 13, save those for the Immolate combo here. So lantern slide, move a lot of different burning from Reva and other models onto the target, making sure the target has a lot of burning, and then use Immolate to remove that burning and transform it into direct damage. She has an inbuilt trigger once per turn, enemy only. After killing, summon a lamp pad into base contact with slow health equal to the burning value reduced by this action. Nice. If everything is going according to plan, you're usually summoning like a lamp pad turn two and then a lamp pad turn three. And then you've usually taken over the game. Like these are eight soulstone models that is actually easier to summon than you think. We already talked about the global presence, the ability to attack a lot of models with the visions of fire, with her explosive ticks, the blast attack actions, like the entire combo with vacuum and blast is kind of good, but here we have a single target focus as well. Make sure a model is dropping a little bit too low with taking burning and small damage a little bit here and there, that's actually kind of easy, making the burning go a little bit too high. If the model has a little bit too low life, like down to four or five, you can easily one-shot that model, just making sure you might need to take focus to avoid minus flips, but you don't need to flip for any damage, you just need to hit. So having a 13 in your hand just ensures a guaranteed kill and pretty much ensures a guaranteed summon of a lamp pad here. I hope you enjoyed this little short crew tutorial go over, over a small and simple Reva strategy. I've played this quite a bunch and I have to say it's really strong. It surprises me how effective the card action economy actually is. You have so many different actions like assist, slam actions, you have plenty of those too from the zombies as well. You're good in death ball mode like clumping up together and moving everything in the middle, but you're also good at spread out you're good at fighting several enemies and you're good at focusing down one target as well. It feels like this is an all-around very adaptive build and we've only consumed 29 soul stones so you have a lot more to add into this crew from this point. We have been looking at some examples from matches that I've played and uploaded on this YouTube channel. Link below. I have a Reva playlist and when I play more Reva and make more battle report videos of those in the future, you will find those Reva games in that playlist. Feel free to take a look if you want to see this Reva build in action. That's all for me. Take care guys and I'll see you next time.